right, so we got flying squirrel electric fly. Yeah, flying electric squirrel thingy. Okay, like I've never really put in a mogul my team. I've played. I've like. I. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, it was. It was found in Generation 5. I actually played the game, but I actually never caught one of these things, and I was never really interested in a mocha. However, it is super cute. It's super adorable. It's an electric flying squirrel. Like, it's the Pikachu. Like, you know how Pikachu, they do like a kind of like a, a mouse Pikachu kind of clone. A mocha's Pikachu's clone, and it's a flying squirrel. That's basically it. So anyways, Thunder Flying Electric Squirrel actually maxes out at 1633, so you can bank that a mocha. You need a pretty good a mocha like pretty high level one and it has fairly great stats so mocha is actually really good for great league especially in flying cup just because like i said it maxes at 1633 so that means if you scroll down here real quick that means a level it caps at about if it's perfect about level 34 that's pretty dang good so if you find a good iv one you'll definitely have a very powerful electric flying squirrel at your disposal now here's what's interesting about it Obviously, everything in the Flying Club is weak to... Most of everything in the Flying Club is weak to Ice and Rock. Or it does, like, neutral damage, depending on it. But Omoka is actually the only one that actually resists... Along with Zapdos, that resists Electric types. Just because of Electric and Flying. So, you resist Electricity, but you're Wicked Flying. So, Electricity does neutral damage. It's one of the two, including Zapdos, where Electricity does... Electric types don't actually do damage to you. Well, I mean, not do damage. Like, it'll still do damage, but I mean, like, super effective damage. So the thing about Amolga, it resists flying itself. So Amolga is really interesting because you like you resist steel and flying, which are two key components in the flying cup. You will see steel wing skarmories. You will see a lot of sky attacks, etc., being aimed at your face. So Amolga does resist those things. And like I said, since it's pretty, since its level goes up pretty high, it is not really like super thick, but it's it's up there. Amolga is up there. Anyways, like I said before, Amolga is actually pretty cheap to second move. The difficulty with Amolga is that you probably don't have a good one. It was out for a very short time. And unless you actually went out and caught one or you popped an incense, 9 times 10, you probably don't have one ready for PvP. It's super cute. It's super adorable. And it's super amazing for the Flying Cup. But like I said, pretty scarce. And you might have to dump a whole bunch of rare candy into it. Because like I said, there wasn't actually a lot spawning during that event. Anyways, let's get to be Pokemon analysis, and hopefully you do have one. Like I said, really good. Let's take a look at how, let's take a look at how good Amolga is. All right, here's a quick overview of Amolga on the rankings for PV Poke. It actually ranks at number two overall. The reason being is because Discharge is a very fast and powerful move, and you even have Thunderbolt to KO. So basically, this thing's going to run through this. Yeah, Amolga is going to run through a lot of things in the Flying Cup overall. As you see, it beats Skarmory, it beats Mantine. Togekiss, Arcudo, Zapdos, and but the ironic thing is it also loses against Zapdos. So if depending on the Shadow or the regular variant, it it's very interesting like how it plays out. Amolga is very good in the lead, ranks number five. You will beat Mantine and Skarmory, two very popular looking leads. The thing is you do lose against Aerodactyl, so and Altaria. So these two, these are three, these three picks right here are very possible leads. So just be careful. And the closer, Amolga ranks at number two. Very powerful in the closer with no shields. You literally just... Sh it's a shocking development because all you do is literally just electrify everything to death with Discharge and Thunderbolt in the closer. And it's a fantastic switch. I rated at number one. All right, so here's the matrix. I put Amolga with Thundershock, Discharge, Airlace, and Thundershock... Wait, let me change this real quick. The Thunderbolt... Actually, here, let me put... This is the crappy moveset. Here's the correct moveset. Airlace is a really bad move. I just put it in here because, you know, science. So Zapdos I put in here as well, just so you could compare Amolga with Zapdos and just to see what they beat and what they don't beat. So this is a two-shield scenario right here. Flying Cup meta. Here's a simulation. Now, in the... Uh, as you see, they all lose against Aerodactyl in the lead with two shields, so... Be careful, like, insta-switch. Like, switch out. Like, dude, switch. Now, Zapdos, here's the kind of... In the two shields, Zapdos, both versions of Zapdos actually beat Amolga. So, be careful of that. You also bleed Gligar. You, Zapdos also beats Gligar, well, as Amolga doesn't. So, just be careful about, like, what you encounter or what you see in the lead. You Gyarados, you do neutral just because Gyarados with Waterfall. Waterfall just chunks so much and Amolga just gets yeeted. Again, Zapdos does win against Gyarados just because of... I'm guessing it's just because of, like, Thundershock damage. Or something of that sort. You beat Mantine, you beat Scar. Both versions of Scarmory, you also beat Mantine. 
So th those are these are like I said in the lead with the two shield. Just be careful. You'll lose against Zapdos in the lead with the, in the two shield. So you lose against a lot of possible popular leads except Mantine and Skarmory. These are probably the two you want to win against. If you see anything but these two, you might want to switch. As you see, Amolga kind of loses gets everything into two shields, except uh, literally Mantine, Skarmory, and Skarmory. And it just dies to everything else. So just be careful. Meanwhile, Zapdos does win the lead against more matchups. But like I said, in the two shields, Amolga has a lead. Just be careful. Now, as a switch, Amolga is very, very powerful. Ranks number one. In my opinion, Zapdos is probably the best switch. But in the like in the one shield, you will lose against Aerodactyl. Of course, you lose against Altaria because Altaria resists elementals. You get you against Shadow Articuno and regular Articuno, except with Air. Wait, what the heck is this? How does does Air? Do you can you actually bait with Aerial Ace? Yeah, what? Yeah, give me. Let, wait, let's take a look at this. Wait, what? You have Thunderbolt, right? Yeah, okay, so that's... So because of, do you actually... Okay, you just straight discharge. Okay, that's just weird. Okay, ignore... Ig, ignore that. Ignore that. Okay, yeah, just ig ignore that. I think this one you... I have no idea how you lose, but it's okay. So, we... So you... Against fellow Lamogas, you will lose. The Aerolace version does lose against the regular Thunderbolt discharger, so just keep that in mind. And in the one shield, you have a ton of great matchups. Again. Again, in the one shield, you lose against regular Zapdos. So this is why I rated I actually rated Zapdos as a the best safe switch just because you do beat a Mulgan in the one shield. So in the one shield you will beat in the one and the twos, in fact, you actually beat a Mulgan with regular Zapdos. So in any scenario, a Mulga will lose against Zapdos. Except in the zeros, where a Mulga actually shines. So that's the one shield, here's the zero shields. In the zero shields things get a whole lot more interesting. You beat a redactyl because you literally just zap it to death. You still lose against Altaria just because it's elemental resistance. You beat both versions of Articuno. And you even beat fellow Mogas. If their Amolga is running Aerial Ace and they're not Thunderbolt, you either one ran out of TMs or yeah, you ran out of TMs. Like, don't use Aerial Ace. That, that lesson, more of the story, do not use Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace is a bad move. It's a horrible move. Of course, you will find nearly every other thing in the Flying Cup meta with the exception of Glegger. And the key thing here is that in the zeros, you actually beat Zapdos. So you lose against every scenario against Zapdos with Omolga, with the exception of the zeros. That's kind of what's dangerous. You lose against, well, not every scenario, as you see in the chart, but if we switch it around, Zapdos has a lot of positive matchups. You will only lose in the zeros or if Omolga actually has a shield. Other than that, you beat Omolga in every other scenario. So be very careful of Zapdos's. It's a very good investment. Don't get me wrong. Zapdos is an incredible investment. Just because you're, you're DPS, you're, just because of the DPS. Like if you look at the DPS typings, even if you, if you, especially if you like see how high this attack is, 13, 14, 15. Like if it, it's very difficult. Like yeah, it's, it's Zapdos is good. So just be careful of Zapdos when you're fighting it when you're using Amolga. Like I said, Zap. Amolga is fantastic in a lot of scenarios. Just be careful and mindful which matches you beat. But you do beat Aerodactyl to zeros. Be careful of Zapdos. And other than that, it's an incredibly powerful mod. Amolga is very, very good. Let me do a quick sim real quick. I'll do a quick sim. We'll train. We shall add Emolga. We shall do Emolga. Well, here we'll do Stealing Skarm. I like Stealing Skarm in the lead. In summary, Amolga is a very good mod. Like I said, double check its matchups though, because if people do invest in Zapdos, you're in trouble. So, but other than that, it's a very powerful, very versatile mon. Especially when you have shields, or if you want to take shields, either one. So, in summary, if you got a good Amolga, you're good. Let's take a look at what we got. We got Skarmory on Skarmory action right here. Pretty sure this Skarmory is a stealing as well, so we're just going to have to play out. Yep, it's a mirror match. Okay, so... Judging by the C by the CPs, I think we might lose we might lose CMP. We're gonna drive up to the Brave Bird and we're gonna fire the sky attack. Oh, they fired the sky attack. That's fine. I don't think we got a steel wing through, but that's perfectly fine. There we go. We're just gonna mirror sky attacks. I'm gonna get to what well, I'm gonna get to another uh, another two sky attacks, and then let's see if I could catch one. I'm gonna throw out this point, and then we have two sky attacks. They actually got a sky to uh, steel wing through, so. That's a little bad. Be careful of your timing, especially when you're in the mirror match. And then we're just going to hopefully break both shields. We're going to take both shields just so we can hope Omolga can go to town. So here we go. I'm going to Brave Breath at this point. I want this shield or we deal heavy damage. Because I want my Skarm to die just because I don't want my Skarm to get farmed. 
Except he's probably going to farm at this point. That's perfectly fine. That Skarm has a lot of farm. Okay. Now, we're going to send in a Molga. We know Skarmory... Whatever Skarmory throws us, we're going to resist it. So this... Yeah, we're going to resist it. So there's no need to fire here. Now, here's the tricky part. You don't want a Molga to take too much damage. Because you... If they have Aerodactyl, we're going to have to switch. Okay, so we get a Zapdos. Alright, so this is kind of bad. Because, well, we have... We don't... In the Zero Shields, we beat Zapdos. So... Remember the scenario? We'll only beat Zapdos if we're in the zeros. So Zapdos has zero shields. We'll Thunderbolt, and then we're just gonna we will just shock him down. And this is where Omolga is very very strong. Omolga up shields plus having an energy lead. As you see here, we'll block the Thunderbolt. Zapdos will never get to another one. We'll be able to farm down here, and then we're just gonna discharge everything to death. No, literally, we're just going to discharge everything to death. We have a shield. We still have a full Aerodactyl if we want to. But Amolga up shield. Oh, okay. This is where we switch. Yeah, not dealing with that. If you see Altaria, like, leave. Like, you're like, yeah. Like, bye, Felicia. Like, get out of there. Because... And we're going to shield this because we don't want Amolga matching up against Altaria. We could get it low enough to where you could kill it, but that's pretty much it. Because Altaria, he's going to switch into Skarmory. We're just going to wait for the Skarmory. There you go. We get the scar. We wanted to switch out. That's perfectly fine. This is what we actually wanted. So Aerodactyl will take out the Skarmory. Well, actually, we'll get a little bit of farm here. And he'll actually take us out, but that's perfectly fine. We'll just Thundershock the Skarmory down, and we'll have enough energy for to probably possibly get two discharges off. Or just, yeah. There you go. Now we could just discharge this Altaria to death. Actually, I think this does KO. I probably should have Thunderbolt in this scenario, but like I said, up shields, you've got a lot of play with the Molgo. Okay, we do just we do just discharge down. GG's to the AI, and as you see, Amolga is very strong up shields. Break the shield to Skarmory, take out Amolga, Amolga with shields will pretty much sweep the competition, even Zapdos. So keep that in mind. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis. Amolga is very po powerful, and I hope you got a good one. And I will see you guys, because in two weeks, we do have this cup. So... A Klein Cup will be out on September 24th. Keep that in mind. And you guys have a wonderful day.